All good. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. My name is Stephanie Clark. I'm the Family Program Director of Habitat for Humanity of Bucks County. I'm thrilled that you're here tonight and especially thrilled that Olga St. Pierre and Jessica Lamer from Olga St. Pierre's real estate team with Keller Williams has invited us and many of us from Habit are at the Habitat Bucks community to join in on her webinar, Decluttering Your Home Stress-Free, something that I enjoy learning very much because it's not something that I do very well. Um, but I'm, we're sharing this webinar specifically to our Almost Home participants. Uh, Almost Home is a free financial education program. It's about seven months long with wonderful partners like Olga and Jess and um, many other partners in our community. If you're looking to improve your finances, um, make them even better than they are, or maybe get them to a point where you feel that you want them to be stronger, um, please reach out to me, send me a, a chat or grab my email from Olga. We're starting our next cohort uh, really later this month, which is really exciting. A little bit more about Habitat Bucks. We were founded in 1990. Since then, we have either built or renovated affordable homes uh, 121 times already. In fact, later this month, we are settling on our 122nd house. And what's really great about our homeownership program is that we're making homeownership a reality for folks who already live and work in, or, or work in Bucks County, but just don't have the opportunity to buy in our community because it's so expensive. And this, and Olga and Jess can tell you this market's been wild this year. Um, it's been made it even more difficult. We also have an amazing home repair program. So if you know someone in Bucks County who needs help maintaining their home, getting it up to code to the, for safety reasons, uh, whether it's a wheelchair ramp or replacing a roof or anything like that, uh, we have an amazing program at Habitat Bucks. So reach out to us as well. We really believe in helping our Bucks County homeowners stay in their homes with dignity and independence. Lastly, we invite you always to visit our Habitat Bucks restores. We have one in Langhorn on Old Lincoln Highway, just behind the Marshalls. And we have one in Chalfont that's actually moving to Warmster later this month. Our restores are home good donation centers that are open to the public Tuesdays through Saturdays. It's basically like a thrift store for your home because we have home furnishings and all the great fun stuff, books, things like that. But we also have appliances and building materials, paint supplies, all kinds of things. That if you're a do-it-yourselfer, um, if you are someone who likes to be creative and, and repurpose things, definitely check out our restores. And like I said, our shelf on store is moving uh, at the end of June, we'll be located at 539 Jacksonville Road in Warminster. Our shelf fund store is closing, sadly, but we're moving into a bigger, better space. We hope you'll join us and, and check out all the great stuff we have to offer. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Olga and Jess, thank you for uh, inviting us and sharing your wisdom with us yet again. I hope you all have a great time uh, learning from Olga today. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Olga St. Pierre. I am a local real estate agent with the team, and uh, we service clients in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and a big part of our business is being supportive of our community resources, and this is why we are here. So I am going to share my screen. Uh, you do not have to take notes feverishly because we are sharing with you the whole workbook that we have available as well as this workshop is being recorded. So that way you can always come back to it and view it at any time at your leisure. All right, let me know you can see this. All good, all right, awesome. All right, so just a little bit of a housekeeping. Uh, you are welcome to jump in as we are going through our workshop. If you have suggestions or questions, you are welcome to post a question into the chat or if you want to mute yourself, and do the same thing and just ask the questions away. I love participation. I love being of value to you uh, in addition and somebody else has suggestions, that's even better. So the more the merrier. So this is what we're talking about today. If you feel like this woman, I promise you by the end of these 30 to 45 minutes, you're going to feel a lot better. Uh, my goal really was when, uh, when uh, the community asked me to design the decluttering workshop, for us is to take what you see on social media, what you see on TV and bring it down and make it relevant and local and also make sure that it's something truly that's relevant to us that we can do every day. 
So my goal is to help you understand that decluttering does not have to be sound scary. It is something that you can actually enjoy. I'll share some of my own tips with you that I do. I'm a big believer in decluttering because I actually think it's healthy for you, not only mentally, but also for your physical health. So that's what we're going to talk, talk about today. And we also got, I have a game plan for you. So you're going to walk away with an actual plan that you can implement as early as tomorrow. Just a little bit about me. I have been in our community working full time with clients like you for the last 12 years. I love what I do. I love being a part of the community and sharing my experience and my wisdom. And our, our team mission is to help anyone who wants to become a homeowner, become one. And once you do, our work does not stop there. We help you be a responsible and sustainable homeowner and a member of our community. We do help you move anywhere pretty much in the United States and Canada. We have a state-of-the-art relocation services. So if we can help you in any way, your friends, your family members, and um, co-workers, please let us know how we can do that. And also, we are here for you in terms of concierge service. Think of us as your A to Z yellow pages. If you need a contractor, we are here for you with a few recommendations depending on different trades. If you need uh, financial professionals, accountants, attorneys, um, anyone to help you with decluttering, just plain muscle, we have it. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. We are here for you and working in the community full time. So let's talk and dive in. Why are we talking about decluttering today? Okay, so a couple of pieces of statistics. This is definitely something that is interesting. So number one, please let me know if you agree with me. 80% of the stuff that we own, we actually rarely use. Do you agree? It is true. And I want you to think about it as you go in around your home, think about and be mindful about it and, to, and you know, think about this question. Next, people spend about 55 minutes a day looking for stuff. That's two weeks out of the year. That's two one week long vacations. Does that ring a bell to you? And the next statistics got, got me very much excited when I was putting this workshop together a couple of years ago is the fact that decluttering can actually reduce your housework by up to 40%. I am game for this. Raise your hand if you are, because to me, that was an amazing stats that said to me, this is gonna make my life easier. Okay, and my philosophy and my standards when I work with clients and I try to help is that once we declutter, the goal is not to do it, you know, once and then let our stuff pile up again, right? The goal is to do it and set up a system that will help you do it easier and easier every time so that way you have more time left to spend with your family, your loved ones and do things that you enjoy. So the things that I'm suggesting for you today to invest in the home is not bringing more stuff to the house, but invest in those things that will help you make your house run efficiently, okay? Uh, once this video gets posted to our YouTube channel, if you look at the box in the, uh, uh, under the video, I'm going to have links to all these products that I mentioned to you so you can easily find them and order them if you want right from Amazon, or you can head over to Home Depot and Lowe's and purchase those items there. So the goal for today is talking about why decluttering is actually very important to do. Room by room suggestions. What are we keeping, selling, throwing, and donating? And of course, the action plan that I already mentioned to you. So jumping right in, why is decluttering important? Here are some of the questions that I hear all the time from my clients, because you know, as, as you can imagine, when I'm starting to work with clients who need to make a move, that is one of the first things that we talk about, that we need to declutter, we need to do some pre-packing. And people don't realize how much stuff we accumulate until they start actually packing for that move. Okay, so what I always tell people is that if you're not planning a move, but you really should start decluttering, do it sooner than later. So these are some of the questions that I heard, and let me know if they make sense to you. I'm not sure where to start. It just grows over time. We all have stuff with, you know, it's painful. I don't know where to start, what to keep and why. I'm afraid of throwing papers away. Does that sound familiar to you? Absolutely. So uh, what I want you to think about is the fact that these are questions that everybody asks. So you're not alone, right? So that's one. Two, I want, and I'm, I'm inviting you today to think about declutter in the bigger picture, okay? The stuff that we have, we carry with us, that, we, that lives around us, 
always will affect our happiness, our health and productivity on two levels. One is conscious and subconscious. And the easy way for me to explain to you what that means is that, you know, when you get up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, then you go put the pot, pot of coffee on and you do an autopilot. And that is something that you're doing on a, on a subconscious level because you, you don't think about it, right? This is something that you do on a regular basis, day in and day out, right? The one thing that I'm, I'm out inviting you to remember today is clutter weighs you down on a, that subconscious level. You don't think about it, but it is there. It's like a hamster wheel that is kind of just grinding away little by little in the back of your mind, okay? It has been proven. Uh, there's lots of research that was done that clutter can be a source of stress, depression, health issues, for example, focus and disruption of sleep, family problems, and home disrepair. And I can tell you that I see it quite often when I'm working with clients, and let's say, and we have a husband and wife and the, and the, you know, and the husband is like, Hey, I am so excited. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. We're going to get moving. I'm going to, you know, we're going to get all these things done. And the wife just puts her hand in front of her and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not ready to go there. I, I, I you know, I need to go through things. I want to make sure we're not throwing stuff away. And I can feel the tension between the two of them because they are not on the same wavelength. Okay. So that is something that is important to consider is to make sure that you and your loved ones in your household are going to do it as a team and you guys are all on the same page. Okay. As clutter accumulates and the energy is going to stagnate. And what I mean by that is when, you know, whenever you walk into the room, for example, you know, if you want to declutter your bedroom, you walk in and you can feel yourself just going sour because you're like, oh boy, I'm talking, I'm thinking about decluttering. I don't know if I want to bother with it. And you can feel yourself just going sour. That's what I'm talking about is the stagnation of that energy. And you're just feeling sloppy. Okay. So today I am inviting you to think of clearing clutter is releasing the stuff and making room for your new passions and new interests and new things that you want to do. Okay. By the fact that you're here, I'm assuming that things, some things are bothering you and you want to do some decluttering in your home, in your life. And that's why you're here. So let's jump right in. Here's the game plan. Uh, for some of you that have attended my workshops before, you know, I am a huge believer on notebooks, right? We have so much technology around us. We have notepads and we have, you know, iPads and phones and so forth. No, I invite you to grab a regular notebook and a pen and use this notebook specifically for your decluttering project. And the reason is, is because when you are writing things down and you're putting your thoughts on paper, your brain gets excited because it feels and it thinks that you're making progress. And that's exactly how you're going to feel. Grab whatever notebook that you have handy. I use actually leftover notebooks from my girls' classes because they write on two pages and then the notebook is bad because it's over. So I use them for all of my notes, for my work, and I have for you know, different projects. If I have running with clients, I use them for different projects, okay? So here's how we're going to do this. Number one, we're actually going to start. And how you do that is you schedule an appointment with yourself, just like you schedule an appointment for a doctor's office, or if you have to go take your kids somewhere, or you need to go to the grocery store, you're gonna schedule an appointment with yourself and you're going to make sure you keep that appointment, right? You're going to honor and respect that appointment for yourself. And that appointment is going to be your first time you're going to declutter something. If you ask me, where should I start? Let's say you are thinking about doing things in your home. I want you to think about your favorite place in your home and start with that room, okay? Whatever, whatever that room is. So let's say you want to start with your bedroom. Okay, that is the room you're going to start and that's the your appointment is going to be. For the first time, I recommend that you set an hour. If you think it's overwhelming and too much, then do 30 to 45 minutes, but that should be at least so that way you can see the progress that you made, okay? Next, I'm asking you to take care of all your distractions. So no more excuses, which means that your phone needs to go on silent mode to avoid any distractions and pings of text messages and social media notifications. Okay, the goal is for you to be fully present. Next, you do need to change into comfortable clothing. Here's bonus for you guys. When you declutter, it's like a workout. So to me, it was super exciting to learn that because I could feel burning calories because you're going to be running back and forth, upstairs, downstairs, carrying boxes, filling stuff, 
you're going to feel it. It's going to feel exciting. So there's the bonus for you. Declutter equals working out. So that's why you need to get into comfortable clothing. So that way you have sneakers on, you have yoga pants, whatever it is that makes you happy and comfortable. Next, you do need to eat before you do this because you are going to work up some appetite and you're not taking breaks. There is no lunch break. There is no nothing break. You're going to have your water bottle. If you need to take a sip, you take it a sip and you're right back to work. Okay. Then put on some great music, light a candle, open a window, choose whatever it is that appeals to you to get you going into the mood of getting things done. Okay. And your notebook is going to be by your side to ready. So you can be ready to jot down some notes and reminders and plans. And here's how we're going to do this. The tools, all right, trash can, recycle plan, and storage bins. I'm a big fan of clear bins, and you can put uh, notes on those bins or what, where, which bin is going to take care of what. Here are some recommendations for you. Things to keep, put away for donations, undecided, throwing away, and selling, okay? So by the end of your one hour, you should have something in every single one of these bins. Now, the goal is not to put everything in an undecided bin, Okay, the goal is to have something in every single bin. Okay, uh, the notebook I find helpful is that if you have one bin of, let's say, this is stuff that goes to my kids, or this is the stuff that's going to my grandkids, you need to give yourself a reminder in your notebook that your kids and your grandkids are going to have a deadline for coming over and picking up those items. Otherwise, they will continue to use your house as free storage. Trust me, this is something that I have had with many, many clients before, and you need to give your family members a deadline to come get your things. Otherwise, those things will get sold or donated. A couple of guidelines to keep in mind. You are keeping things that bring you joy, make you smile, that are supporting the vision of you moving forward and creating new opportunities for yourself. You're going to release and put stuff in every single bin except for keeping of the things that you just want to shed, get rid of, especially things that are making you sad, guilty, unhappy, okay? If you're not sure of some things, right? If it's some kind of mementos, you may put that aside because we're, I have a separate slide for you on how you handle those keepsakes and mementos that maybe you have inherited that were passed down to you because I know those are truly the tough things to get rid of, right? To, to do something with them, okay? Now, stay focused for your time block. Um, another recommendation is to use a regular kitchen timer, right? The one that we use that is your tick tocking to you, or you can use a microwave or a oven timer. And as soon as you're done, you are done. You need to pat yourself on the back and then take, take down your notes to say, okay, which room were you working in? How far did you get? And guess what? If you want to keep going, keep going. Set a timer for another 30 minutes to an hour, okay? I find that uh, Saturday mornings, if you work a regular Monday through Friday schedule, to take your first day off the morning of and get through some of this stuff, because then you can focus on the rest, whatever your day needs, needs to happen, whether it's running around or, you know, doing things with family uh, errands and so forth. So, and then the most important thing afterwards is you need to schedule your next appointment with yourself. So if you did it on a Saturday morning and you spent a good hour doing this and you got something accomplished, then you need to decide before you wrap up with your decluttering appointment is when is your second appointment happening and that appointment needs to go into your calendar. All right, let's go through our house and see what is it that we can accomplish in every room. This is your kitchen, all right? Please don't tackle the whole kitchen at once unless that is your goal and you think that an hour or two hours is going to be enough. For most people, it's not. So focus on one cabinet, on two drawers, or if you want to start with your refrigerator. Hey, don't forget, the refrigerator needs to be decluttered as well. Throwing away all your expired food, uh, organizing the refrigerator so that we know where things are. If you want, label the shelves in the area so that we know exactly where stuff goes, especially for your fam family members. Because if you declutter your fridge and you know exactly where things go, it's also going to help you save money when you need to go to the grocery store. Okay, so I have some suggestions here for you. Meat goes at the bottom shelf, drinks and condiments go on the doors, and um, leftovers go in the middle shelf in the clear container that says, eat me now. They have to be eye level 
right? I have to do that, especially with my girls, because otherwise they don't see that stuff because they look straight ahead in the middle shelf, okay? I also make sure that we have a nice thick notepad that is hanging on my refrigerator door. And I tell my family, if you see that we're running low on something or you finish something, you need to put that item on the, on the grocery list because if it doesn't go on the grocery list, it does not get bought. Because my, I don't know about you guys, but my family had a bad, has a bad a habit of telling me, oh, mom, we ran out of something five minutes before we're all going to bed. And I tell them that I am not going to remember this. You need to actually write it down on the grocery list and then it gets purchased. Use clear glass storage containers, um, either glass or plastic, whatever is you're comfortable with. This way you can see exactly what's there and it's also easy to clean. So this, the, the photos that you can see are some of the items that I use on a regular basis that I have clients that suggested to me. These are the things that you can, that you can invest in to make sure that your kitchen runs efficiently, all right? We have some airtight food storage containers, pantry racks, uh, pantry pan and pot lid organizers. These are hugely important because if you stack your pots and pans and they have a nonstick surface, you're going to scratch them, which means that you are damaging the surface and then you have to throw them away, okay? Expandable stackable kitchen organizers are great to expand room in your cabinets. Container lid organizers, I don't know about you guys, but I actually have this and I also use a letter holder, you know, the plastic one that you usually use in the office. I actually use that one as well for my um, lit organizers as well, because it's just, you know, you're able to just stack things. And of course, don't forget to have some organizers on your doors. Uh, you know, don't forget to use that space as well. Now, as you're going through your cabinets, I want you to think about really like how many cups and serving utensils do you really need? You know, do, do take a look at your cups and your utensils and see if there's anything that's chipped and cracked, right? Because especially with the things that we use on a regular basis, they chip, they crack, they, uh, they become brittle, and we don't want to eat any of that. So if you see any of those things, it's time for them to be thrown away and recycled, and it gives you an opportunity to buy something new and fresh, okay? So let's head into the bathroom, okay? Here's what we're starting out with. You need to take everything out especially all the goodies and all the stuff that we have in our cabinets. You'll be surprised how much stuff you do have. You need to go through those things and you need to see if there's stuff that you haven't used for more than six months to a year, that stuff needs to be thrown away. And here's how I want you to think about the stuff that we use in our bathroom is not in the refrigerator, right? With meat, which means that we can't keep it cold and we can't keep it in controlled environment, which means that that stuff is full of preservatives. So if you have stuff that is sitting out for longer than six months to a year, it's getting old. There's probably separation and chemical reaction that is happening. And then what you do is you put it on your body. Your skin is the biggest organ that you have on your body. So what you put on your body is what gets absorbed into your body, into your skin. And one thing that I can tell you for a fact, I am 100% sure of it, is the fact that we have one body that is one home that we have. I cannot help you downsize it or change it or upgrade it, right? Like we can do with houses. Buying a house and selling a house, that is not a problem. That is my passion and priority, and I can help you with that. But your home, your body is all we got. So we really, really have to take care of it. And that means what we eat and what we put on our body is very important. So I encourage you as much as the bottles look pretty and you know you bought something or you got suckered into buying something because there was a you know infomercial on TV, trust me, I've been there, throw that stuff away and give yourself a permission to buy fresh items every six months. That's what I decided for myself. So that way it's simple, right? Simple is buying things on good sales in December and January because of holidays and then buying fresh things, fresh ingredients in July, right? So that is a month away, July 4th, around the holiday time. That is just something easy to remember, right? Every six months. Next, go through your old medicines as well, check expiration dates and throw that stuff away. It's recommended that you don't flush it down the toilet, but actually drop off to your police department. And I know that some of the pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens will take old medicine back. Next. Let's get things organized. I want you to think about your morning routine and your evening routine. And again, use shoe boxes, plastic containers, or the same containers that I suggested to you for the kitchen. Organize your stuff that you use on the regular basis by that box, because then all you have to do is pull it out, 
And also, again, it's going to help you save money because if you are saying that you're running something, uh, running low on something, you can throw it on your grocery list and then purchase it next time you're in the store. Makeup. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to replace your makeup on a regular basis. Please don't keep stuff more than six months to a year. Here's some general rule of thumb for you. Mascara, eyeshadow, lipstick. Just think of it this way. Just replace it every six months. Get, so, get some free um, uh, fresh items every six months so that way you don't have to think about it and you don't have to worry about it. And of course, when we are organizing things by our, by our morning and evening routine, Think about how you can make your organization in your vanity cabinet more useful, okay? If you can use your doors to hang some organizers, if you can use some stackable shelves for yourself, do, take, do think about it and it will help you keep get things organized. It will help you, uh, you know, to easily clean the insides of your vanities. And again, you can use the same items in your kitchen as you can use them in the bathrooms. All right, heading into bedrooms. What I can tell you for sure is that if you're not sleeping well, potentially having a lot of clutter in your bedroom could be a culprit, right? Because if your bedroom is full of stuff, we're feeling guilty and brain cannot ignore the clutter. It is taking mental effort and energy for the brain to kind of ignore it. And again, it is a hamster wheel at the back of your mind. You are using energy while you're sleeping. So I encourage you, if you want to start with your bedroom to help yourself to sleep better, do that. It is definitely a good place to start. So let's talk about clothing and stuff, okay? Um, clothing is a tough one for us. I completely understand. So the rule of thumb that the experts recommend on TV is actually six months. Guess what? The good news is I'm going to give you more time because I thought even six months was a little bit too fast. So we're going to do two years, which means it's two, two um, repeat seasons, right? Two winters, two summers. If you haven't worn something in two years, you're probably not going to wear it. So let's time. That is your time to pack it up and take it to the donation. Other suggestions, if it's out of style, if it's stained, torn, and in bad shape, if you don't like something or if you don't need it, if it's too small or large, donate it. Once you make room in your closet, then give yourself some grace and permission to buy maybe a few fresh pieces because yes, styles and trends do change every year. Then you know you, you, you feel better because you got a bunch of stuff out and you want to maybe replenish some of these pieces. I also encourage you to organize your closets from maximum use. I can't tell you how many times I see people and they're like, I don't have a lot of space. I only have a couple of closets. And when I go in there, all I see is them using maybe 30 to 40% of it. I encourage you to invest in these closet organizers to help you truly maximize your closet space from ceiling to the floor. I actually have my closet organized just like that of the picture on the right. I have shelves. I have rows, two rows in every single closet. My husband was very, is very handy, so he was able to create everything. I told him, I was like, here's where I'm in my mind, here's where I'm thinking, and he was able to create that. It just takes some brackets and some pieces of wood to make it happen. If you're not handy, you can buy pre-made closet made organizer kits. There's tons of different varieties. So that way you utilize the space that you need, whether it's in your own home and whether you are renting. And again, Use cubes, use those closet organizers. You can even use those plastic uh, boxes that I recommended for your kitchen and bathroom. You can also use them in your bedroom as well because you can see clearly through them. All right, moving into family rooms and living rooms, okay? It is time for you to go through your books in your bookcases and uh, weed out stuff that is outdated that you don't want to keep. You're not going to reread again. You can definitely take the books to the library. If you have old magazines, textbooks, encyclopedias, those need to be recycled. What I can also tell you is that a paper is a huge collector of dust. So if you are sneezing and coughing in your home and you're not sure what's happening and you have a lot of paper, we don't vacuum the paper a lot. And it co just collects and attracts, attracts dust like you no know, tomorrow. So just be mindful of that. If you see, if you have a lot of them, then you definitely need to start going through them and weeding them little by little. Go through your electronics and cords, go through your pillows and blankets. If there's stuff that's ripped, you know, not be needed, 
you can throw it away or donate it and then give yourself permission to maybe buy a couple of p p uh, pillows and blankets that are going to brighten up your space. And of course, I invite you to go through pictures. Pictures are important. Pictures bring us joy. We take so many pictures on our phone, but nobody's printing them anymore to put in those frames. Is there time for you to update your photos? Does that bring you joy and happiness? You can easily do this by taking your phone uh, and taking it to CVS and Walgreens and you can print pictures very inexpensively right there on the spot and then you can update them into beautiful photos. And if you want to go into further detail and create some beautiful pieces for your wall that make you happy, whether it's the pictures of something that you took or you want to maybe you know purchase some paint, some uh, pictures, uh, this set of frames that you can purchase right on Amazon and it's already set up and ready to go for you. All you need is to put the pictures in. You can enjoy them right in the beautiful collage right on your wall. Home office, okay? That is a biggie right now. A lot of us are working from home offices. You wanna make sure that that place is inviting. It is not very cluttered because yes, you can have an off home office that is not very cluttered. Again, we're starting with paper. Recycling old magazines, unneeded papers, we're going to file away and scan important documents. You can buy inexpensive scanner and printer. That's what I have. I have a print, printer scanner and copier in one that I purchased from, um, it's an HP product. And you can scan everything into Dropbox or Google Drive. So think of those products as technology that allows you to have a virtual filing cabinet where you can keep thousands and thousands of papers, okay? When you get your incoming mail, I encourage you to go through it and separate it into a couple of piles. That's what I usually use for myself. You go a pile to go through, one pile is to shred, which goes into a um, paper, ba paper bag, and then another one goes into recycle, which is another paper bag that gets taken care of once a month. If you are getting drowning into emails from retailers and other companies, you can use this service called Unroll Me, and you can use this tool to quickly unsubscribe. If this is a um, email address that is important to you, I don't recommend you subscribing to any of those services. You can always create an, another Gmail account that you can use for you know, junk email, so that way you, you're not worried about missing something that is important that is in your primary uh, email box. Junk mail website opt out pre screen. And the goal again is you have to remember that the mail comes in Monday through Saturday, six days a week. So if you don't stay on top of it, it's just going to pile up. So that is definitely a good idea for you to be mindful and to do something like this at least once a week. So that way you are maintaining control over your papers. Garage and basement. I'm encouraging you to use not just the floor of your garage, you also have walls. And guys, we have a ceiling. And you can mount shelves to the ceiling to put stuff away and, and, and put some of these totes away that maybe we don't use on, you know, very often. Maybe it's, um, <coughs> maybe it's ski equipment, maybe it's fishing equipment, whatever it is that you don't use on a regular basis, put it in those to totes and then you can label those totes as well. And the same goes for your <coughs> basement for your shed. Just think about the space that you guys have yourselves and how you can organize it better so that way you can remove things off of the floor and use the spaces that are around you. All right, let's talk about shredding. This is one of the questions that I get quite often. Well, I don't know if I, what should I keep? I don't know if I'm going to need it. Should I shred stuff? Should I not? So these are a couple of things that I recommend that you invest in. This is the shredder that I use in my own home and I use it for my personal papers as well as for my business as well. And you do need trash bags as well because you cannot um, recycle the, the shredded paper. It was what I was told because of the ink on it. You need to throw it in the trash. So have these things handy for you next to your shred toad or a box. And if you have any concerns, or if you even have a little bit of inkling, should I, sh should I shred this paper or not? Always do. It's always better to just take care of this, just in case if you have even a shred of concern, 
if this item is going to hurt you potentially or not. All right, this is an important piece of paper. I encourage you to study it once you get a copy of this workbook. This is a good guide for you to use to hang on your refrigerator or in your home office of how long should I keep stuff, especially when it comes to paperwork. Okay, so a first couple of items I will let you read on your own. The one that I truly want to focus on is the last one that is called keep forever. If something happens to your home, God forbid it's, you know, gets lost in the fire or something else, or there's some kind of damage, right? Because things can happen overnight without us realizing them. And there is no planning for it. Okay, I encourage you to have all these important things that are either difficult to replace or they cannot be replaced. These items should be in a safety deposit box that you can rent to the bank. Or if you want to keep a close eye on it, then you need to purchase a safe. You can easily do them, do this at Home Depot or Lowe's. I purchased mine at Home Depot and I have it sitting in my bedroom uh, in my closet. Okay? Uh, this is the list of items that I strongly recommend that you keep in your safe. These are the things that are either difficult to replace because you have to go through government agency or they just cannot be replaced plainly. So this is a good list for you as a, as a frame of reference, any kind of legal, legal documents, anything that pertains to ownership of anything, okay? Um, licenses, certificates, anything that is truly important to you, I encourage you to keep in your safe. All right, let's talk about how we're we getting all the stuff out of our house, right? There's a couple of different options. The first one is throwing away. I encourage you to take advantage of your regular trash and recycle days. The goal is to put something out at every opportunity. Uh, check and see if your township has a bulk day as well that you can just get rid of a bunch of stuff. Then of course we have um, 1-800-GOT-JUNK and then junk king trucks. I can tell you that uh, my recommendation is to put those services aside as your last minute resort because they are expensive. Uh, electronic recycling hazard trash days are important for you to keep in mind because we cannot just put TVs and electronics out to the curb anymore. The law has been in place for a few years, but I still see people do that. Those things have to be disposed properly and in certain locations. Okay. Uh, furniture. Uh, if we are talking about as a general rule of thumb, I can tell you that out of your whole house, your furniture, the biggest and the heaviest is going to be the most difficult to get rid of, whether it's donation, whether it's selling. So I encourage you to think about those big pieces first, if that is the route that you want to take in your own decluttering project. A Baxter is a great idea from waste management. It's like a dumpster in the bag, which I have a picture of for you in the right um, upper right corner. Uh, the bag itself is not expensive and you can fit quite a bit of things in there. And that's great for if you are maybe doing a renovation project in your home and, and you need a little bit more space than just, uh, you know, a couple of trash cans. All right, here's a great a list for you for donations. If you are thinking about instead of donating everything to a, a, a great place like Restore, if you want to do certain things to different, uh, you know, uh, companies or animal shelters or, you know, any kind of um, specific companies that are interested in doing things, this is a great list for you that I encourage you to check out, depending on what it is that you have. All right, what about these things? I promised you we were going to touch upon things that are meaningful things that bring us memory that sometimes gets passed down to us from you know, family members and from generations to generation. These are the hardest things to uh, get through, I completely understand. So here are some suggestions for you. Greeting cards, kids artwork, let yourself keep a few meaningful ones, okay? And then you can actually create a beautiful frame and collage out of them and be creative about it truly. And the rest of them, I recommend that you take a photo and then you can make a really pretty album on your phone or in, on your computer, and then you're going to recycle those items. Other keepsakes from loved ones, the same thing. A few pieces on display. If you want to donate items to other family members or someone else who may be interested, uh, that's a great way to do that. And then you're taking photos of the other pieces and then you're getting them to donation. 
Uh, photos and albums are tough ones because we don't want to lose memories of our loved ones. So how do we keep them? Because, you know, pictures don't keep forever. They get yellow, the albums get destroyed. So the best way to do them is to digitize them. Uh, you can do them at your local library for free. Costco offers services and there are quite a few companies online that do that for you where you send away all the photos and they get everything scanned for you. And then they send you a like a USB drive or they put it on CD, whatever piece of technology that you're comfortable with. So you can definitely explore these options. What I invite you to do is just to remind yourself that you are not casting these memories and heirlooms aside. You are not just throwing them away. What you're doing is you're creating breathing room in your life for new memories, for new keepsakes, for things that your kids, your, your parents are maybe doing now, okay? So, and you are recognizing that what's important is happening right now, right in front of you. And it's not just a box that is sitting and unfortunately collecting dust in your attic. DVDs, CDs, and VHS, you can definitely recycle uh, the cassettes. Nobody wants them now, but DVDs and CDs, you can definitely donate them to a couple of the places like Salvation Army and so forth. All right, let's talk about selling. That is our next option. Um, I'm a big believer of being able to see if you can sell something to even get some money for the stuff that you have. This way, you know, it's going to help you for new projects maybe that you are thinking about doing uh, so here's a couple of suggestions for you. eBay and Etsy, of course, are go-tos. Uh, if you are on social media and you feel comfortable, I'm a big fan of Facebook sale groups, Craigslist. There's a couple of different apps that are available. If you have things that are designer, you may want to use Poshmark. Um, and of course, our traditional ways of doing it is hosting garage sales, yard sales. You can hire an estate sale company if you have a, a lot of things that need to be taken care of. Some of these companies do things right on site at your house, or you can just do it online safely and then schedule items to be picked up by the buyers. And also think about when you're trying to do this, because I can tell you that these sales are a lot of work, right? They're not easy to host. They take time and they take energy. Do you have someone who can help you, right? Friends, family, you can hire personal organizers to help you do that, or you can actually hire a company that can handle the sale for you, and they will sort and price and organize everything for a percentage of the total sales. And overall, when you have a lot of stuff to sell, hiring a company to handle the sale for you is one of the best decisions that you can make. All right, your action plan. Here's what I'm asking you to do. You need to find that notebook. Whether it's a notebook or notepad, whatever makes you happy and gets you comfortable, the goal is starting tomorrow or tonight is to get you moving in the right direction, okay? What I invite you to do is think about these questions uh, that I'm asking here is why do you want to declutter what room you want to start with? Why is it bothering you? Do you have potentially some kind of a time frame in mind that you need to do these things for, okay? Do you need help? Who can you ask? Do you need to potentially hire someone to help you with your decluttering projects, okay? And of course, again, why are you doing this and when do you wanna be done by? Next, a painter's blue tape has been a great suggestion that I now recommend to just about everyone. It's a great way for you to label items that you plan on keeping. Blue tape is easily peelable and you can use that and a Sharpie to write on the tape things to keep, or maybe things that you may want to give to your family members, use that as your visual planner to help you when you walk into the room to see how much of the stuff that you already took care of versus how much stuff you still have to go through, okay? And of course, you have to set a date and time to get started, right? That is the first step. The most important thing that you can do is just decide and say, okay, hey, you know what? It's already Tuesday. I'm just gonna buckle down create my list, but Saturday morning is my appointment. I'm going to turn on my favorite playlist and I'm going to get cracking. So that is what I'm asking you today is figure out the date and time. Even if it's 30 minutes, you need to get started. And of course, please use this handy room by room guide that I have included in this workbook to help you get started. No matter what room you're in, there are some tips and tricks that I have included in the workbook that I'm sharing with you today. So 
that's what I have for you today. If you need help with recommendations for contractors or some muscle to help you in your decluttering project, please reach out to us. We're here to help you. If you're looking for home updating consultation, because that is part of your decluttering as well, we are here for you as well. So I am going to stop sharing now and let me know what questions that you have based on what I had to share with you. All right, let me take a look at the chat first and see what we have. All right, Stephanie says, half of my housework is cleaning up the piles of stuff that accumulate each week. You know, I think that my daughter's mission sometimes when they come from school is to bring more stuff for me to clean up. So I, I'm with you, I completely understand. And Snow says that for people who are tech savvy, it's more efficient to coordinate your calendar, to-do list, selling apps, contacts, et cetera, electronically. Absolutely. If you like the efficiency of it, of having everything in one place and having everything in your phone, then by, by all means, utilize. I'm a big user of um, uh, my Google Calendar. I use it for everything, including reminding myself sometimes a couple of times about the same task so that way I don't forget, because if I promise someone I'm going to do something, I want to make sure that I keep my word. All right, Habitat Restore will pick up your donations. Absolutely. One thing that I want to caution you is that a lot of the times these services do get booked up, especially now that we're in summertime. So if you are making plans and you want to have uh, Habitat pick up your items, you need to plan ahead. You, you might have your appointment a month or two from now. However, now you have a hard deadline that you can work towards. All right. Uh, Jane and Eileen, do you have questions? Is that why your hand is raised? So you feel free to un unmute yourselves or if you want to, to type in your question in or your comment in the chat box as well. No, I just raised my hand at the beginning. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so you agreed with yeah. everything I said, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, wonderful. Jane, is that the same thing for you? You agreed with everything I said? <laughs> okay. All right, and then Carol suggested freecycle.org, which gives you opportunity to offer items to others, pick up, pick your recipient, and then they will come and pick up at the porch. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of that as well. If you can share something with others, I'm a big fan of donating instead of throwing things away, because there's always someone that probably needs something that you don't need anymore. Yeah. All right, what else do we have? Let's see, Buy Nothing Groups, absolutely. I am a member of our local one. Buy Nothing Groups are on Facebook if you are on social media. You can join them. A lot of the time, somebody who doesn't need someone will post a question and say, I'm looking for a stroller. And then you have a lot of people saying, absolutely, I have one. When can you pick it up? Absolutely, I agree. Rosie, thank you. Ah, Bertha is asking, do you have some Canadian resources for similar places? Good question. Let me do some thinking on that. And I will see what resources I have. I have... Um, picked up quite a few of Canadian uh, participants in my workshops. So I'll have to see. Uh, just give me some time, Bertha, to work on it. I might come up with something. I'll check with my, my, my um, colleagues and partners that are in the Canadian market. Carol is uh, saying, when decluttering clothes, I have found that items I choose to keep, I put together coordinating and take a picture of the outfit so I have for the future. That's great. I've had see people do the same thing. And you know what they also do? They even put coordinating jewelry right together on the hanger. So that way it's all there and they all they have to do is just grab that hanger. So I think that's a great idea. That's awesome. Okay. So I am is stating that in Toronto, outside of COVID, Canadian Diabetes Association will pick up items. Great. That's awesome. Great suggestion. Barb. When do the attics and basements get done? <laughs> Hi, Barb. Uh, I think that pertains to the question of, is this something that is your priority? 
So I know that a lot of people kind of leave them to the last because that's a lot, that's a lot more hauling and running back and back and forth upstairs than down the stairs. But I'm of a school of thought, you tackle your hardest project first. This way you just get it done and out of the way, you're going to feel a huge sense of accomplishment. And then you can just say, well, since I've done the, the biggest thing, everything else is downhill from there. So. Well, now it's too hot to work in the attic. So you have to <laughs> fill, fill the fall. <laughs> well, you know what? Tackle your basement then. Basement is going to be nice and cool. Okay? Well, that's not my department. That's his. <laughs> All right. I got it. <laughs> but you're right. Right now, the attics, unless you have them ventilated very well ventilated, they are going to be too hot to work in. So I agree. Since we've been home for a while and may have some extra pounds, do we keep the clothes for the two-year mark for clothes? You know, my, the way I decided to handle it myself, I said, I said, I am not buying you when I'm looking myself in the mirror any clothes. So if you're okay wearing tight stuff, that's on you. But I told myself, I am not buying more clothes. So uh, I think... It's up to you to decide, but they just don't give yourself too much leeway is probably my suggestion because then you're going to say, well, you know, I have my stash. I should be good. Decluttering is exercise, remember? So let's get started on that. And maybe you won't have to worry about those few extra pounds when you're done. <laughs> All right. What else do you have? If you have any more excuses, please shut them out because I will have a good explanation for you. Oh, I got one. How Yay, about Diana? <laughs> would you, um, I guess sometimes I think when I'm decluttering, I need to go and like, what's stopping me is I need to go buy container storage stuff, even though I don't know what I need to contain or store yet. So mm -hmm. sometimes I think it may be better to start the decluttering process and then buy containers for what I need at that at the time, or I don't know. I mean, I don't know. My suggestion <laughs> is go to the grocery store and get some mm -hmm. of the boxes from them. Mm -hmm. or, or next time you go to the grocery store, go to the customer service and say, hey, I need some boxes. My favorite mm -hmm. ones from the grocery stores that I have a lot of my clients use for also moving are egg cartons because they have handles and they are great size, okay? So at least start there. And that mm -hmm. actually falls into the question that Bertha just posted. What are some of the typical failures that I see clients do? do? <laughs> well, they're like, well, if I don't have boxes, I don't have, I don't have my tools, so I can't do it. <laughs> no, no, <Yeah>. no, <laughs> no. Get some boxes going. And you know what? If you order stuff on Amazon, even if you have a smaller box, use that. Use that for small items. And, mm -hmm. you know, put that somewhere where you can see it. That's to me, that's how I handle the stuff that I can't forget. I make it an eyesore for myself that I literally have to walk past it every day. So that way I don't forget. So whatever you think works for you and your personality, I like my house clean. So <laughs> grab, grab some boxes. You can also go to liquor stores and get some of those boxes. They're not big, but they're, you know, it's a good start for you. Just don't give yourself an excuse just to procrastinate more. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So if you hey, have a hi snow. Uh, can I ask you about something? I didn't want to interrupt sure. you. Please. Okay. So I need to sell my house and I need to get rid of most of what I own. I'm not going to be buying another house. Okay. And um the problem that I'm finding is that, and I'll tell you, I, I'm not in Bucks County, although I'm my, actually my sister lives there, but I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I grew up around there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the issue is it's way too much. A house full of stuff is way too much for a garage sale. Um, way too much to try and sell online, but companies that do estate sales generally do not want to work with don't want to do it if someone is still living in the house so you want to keep enough furniture in the house to stage the house you know uh but you want to get rid of almost everything else so how do you do that is your situation where you are still living in the house correct 
Yes, I'm living in the house. I do not know where I will be living next. I will not be buying something. I will probably be moving to another state. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, so the, the house cannot be empty. Um, I also don't know what's going on with the state sales is, I mean, up until a couple of weeks ago, it seemed like there was no way you were going to have hundreds of thousands of strangers going through, through your house. Um, so how are people handling this right now? I have a family right now where we're going, working through the same project, the same challenge. And what I would suggest to you is that I can definitely help you and put you in touch with some of those companies, because even though you still live there, they will still handle the sale because what they will do is all the items that you're planning on keeping, they will put in one room or in but there's, no, there's no there's no way that you can put so if you want to sell your house you need to and you need to have an, enough stuff to stage your house mm -hmm. so i can't put my dining room tape you know i've got a king size bed in my bedroom i can't also put a leather sofa and a dining room table and all that you know in one room what I have seen companies do is they just label certain items that are not for sale. They just plainly label them not for sale. And they, because when they have a huge house that they handle, they have more than one person. They have a team there that operates and team members will be staged and located throughout the house to keep it, to keep everybody moving in the right direction and to remind people that certain items are not for sale. I think you are, I understand you're, you know, it's, it's overwhelming and I think you're concerned. However, everything- I'm also, I'm also disabled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and over 65. Sure. And, um, so, but in my experience, so I've been to a lot of estate sales and I don't want to take up everybody else's time, mm -hmm. but generally those are somebody died and the family selling the house and, uh, you know, somebody wants to keep some old family furniture. That's not the same thing as having a house full of new furniture in good condition mm -hmm. and then having a thousand people go through it. I can definitely help you with that. Don't think that just because you're still there and you have pieces that you want to keep and things that need to stay for the house sale that this cannot be done. There's definitely companies that will work with you because you know, not everybody has the same situation, the same scenario. Everybody has different circumstances and we can, in, you know, there are companies that will help you. So I can definitely reach out to you um, at, a, at another time to talk to you a little bit more about where you are and what is it that you're looking for. All right, what else do we have? Mm -hmm. Hi, just a suggestion. Um, what about storage for the lady who was talking just now? Is that an option? Putting some of the stuff in storage? Absolutely. What I have done before is made recommendations to some people to get a pod, right? Because you can put everything in the pod. And, uh, you know, if your house then goes for sale, let's say, and the, the pod is the only place where you store things, it's okay for the pod to stay on your driveway. Uh, people understand that you are moving and you need to put things somewhere. So that is definitely not a deterrent for buyers if they're looking. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie, you made a great point about houses selling right now without being staged. That's true. Even, you know, even if uh, you may want to take everything with you, it's okay to have the house empty because we have other things that we can do without physical furniture being in the house to help you and you know stage some of those things using technology so that's not an issue olga if you have things in your house that are older and maybe antique or antique like um is it normal for to go to an antique dealer and say hey will you tell me what this is worth. Is that what antique dealers are used to doing? Or are they more for just grabbing stuff and putting it for sale? It depends on the pieces. I have, uh, I have contacts with a lot of organizers, somebody who handles strictly furniture, someone that is a, um, like a auction house. 
and they will ask you, depending on what pieces that you have, they have a lot more connections than I do. So I usually point the clients in their direction and then they take it from there and they might say, okay, what piece do you have? Do you know how old it is? They start with pictures and then they say, okay, yes, this is something we can help you or no, why don't you talk to this gentleman because he specializes in mid-century furniture or they specialize in something that's early 1900s. So that's kind of, we, we go through that. That's why we have that concert service. We have the resources because I don't know a lot about antiques, but I definitely know who I can talk to that can be, you know, because they are the experts in that field themselves. I am glad, Snow, that you said pot is a good idea. Absolutely. There's actually a couple of different options, not just pods. They have some other box style services as well. But again, this, you know, that's why we always brainstorm depending on what your needs are and how do we make this as stress-free as possible for you, especially if you're still in the house. How about, can I ask you something? I guess my mother-in-law, they downsize and they live in a garage apartment, but um, they have put their stuff in, a, in an enclosed trailer, mm -hmm. kind of like the pod. Mm -hmm. but we are trying to help them go through that pod or that trailer and um right now it's just sitting in our yard because i got my own clutter to worry about and now i got her clutter to worry about mm -hmm. but i guess we're we're at the at a standstill because um you know she feels it's valuable and it has value i guess in her eyes and in her heart and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, mm -hmm. but a lot of it's antiques, you know, or, or antique also meaning falling apart too, you know, that may need, if, if in the right place or with the right person to, to do things, yes, they may found value in it. Um, so it's kind of hard to negotiate that you know like like kind of like with that you know do you find an antique person I, I don't know if I you know find somebody like that and they say well yeah that's really all in her head you know it's really not a value or you know I know like when I go look at something at, at some of these little antique stores um I, I think oh yeah I have it in that trailer and you know it's $50 there of course in a yard sale would probably only get two dollars for it but that's you know, that's the part of where they buy things at the yard sale for the $2 and sell it at the antique store because they, you know, they have fixed it and have buffed it or put it back together. And, you know, I don't know. So I don't know how to, how to deal, help her deal with that stuff. I usually start out with my organizer. I have an organizer. That's my go-to that helps with sorting mm -hmm. and, I've asked her before because I had some clients who have, you know, model trains and they have like a lot of cars that are they their husbands have collected over the years. And I will literally text her and I say, Cindy, what do we do with this? And she's like, well, what is this? And I'm like, well, we have model cars or we have model trains or we have some magazines. And she's like, you know what? Let me talk to so-and-so because they specialize in some of these little nifty Mm -hmm. you know, uh, baseball Great. cards or whatever it is, right? And then based on that, they can give you an idea on what it is that you have and what you think is valuable. Because a lot of the times too, we're talking about baby boomer generation, for example, they all think that their crystal and their Hummel figurines and other things that are valuable, including China. And because everybody else likes things the same way as them, it is no longer valuable because there's just so much of it on the market. So it just could be someone else telling them, you know what, unfortunately, it's not because everybody else is thinking the same way and it's just oversaturated the market. It's not valuable anymore. I can tell you based on the past conversations that I had with clients as well as antique dealers and my organizers, you know, they're thinking China, they're thinking crystal. It's very rarely is something that's truly valuable. Nobody wants that stuff anymore. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and. Uh, my workbook is available as a PDF. So everybody that signed up will get a copy of it. Absolutely. So you can use it as a guide. And then Barb says that let the antique dealers tell that it's not the antique, it's junk. Absolutely. It's somebody that, you know, somebody who knows what they're talking about. Um, you know, I think 
Diana, that might helpful, be helpful to you when they hear it from someone else who is the expert in their field. And mm -hmm. you know what? It, I think it's also going to make them feel better thinking that they have tried at least to determine whether it's valuable or not. Right. Well, and, and many things can be repurposed mm -hmm. or, you know, recreate it for different looks and things, which is purely decor, which, you know, would be a lot better used than being in a, in a, in a trailer for now half a year. I mean, you know, absolutely. That, yeah, that's a tough one, but it's it's also labor intensive because you have to pull those items out. You need to take pictures of them. You can do research online. So that's something that if they want to figure it out, they're going to have to do a little bit of legwork to figure out what it is and then reach out to the people that know more about that particular item. Right. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? I love all this participation and questions. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Now, well, if there's no more questions, thank you so much guys for participating. We have another declutter workshop that is on the schedule for this month. Plus we have a schedule for a couple of things, including uh, top renovations for your home. Uh, we're talking about a couple of different objects. We have a definitely jam packed calendar for the month of June that we will share with you as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, Stephanie. Thank you for having us again, as always. Uh, it's a pleasure to be of assistance to the Habitat and to our community, and we hope to see you guys again, hopefully, at our other webinars, all right? Thank you, Olga. Thanks, uh, everybody. All Have right, my pleasure. Week. Have a great afternoon, everyone, and a great week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.